Dante, Devil Hunter, Paranormal Mercenary, and Private Investigator. This statue is an absolutely perfect likeness to this character from the main Devil May Cry 5 game and the special edition. With his signature smirk and his vast array of weapons, this is an absolute must-have for any Devil May Cry fan. I've been so excited for this piece to just arrive, just simply to have it as like a centerpiece of my main collection, along with the other two that you've previously seen. But let's just jump straight into the assembly and unboxing. If you'd like to skip this part, please jump to the time marked on the screen. See you guys there. Still a soul for a second chance, but you will never become a man. Thank you. 
Did you skip? Yeah? Oh well, let's just cover the individual parts. We'll start with the head sculpt. The signature Prime 1 translucent resin used on the skin is absolutely perfect as always. The eyes look fantastic and even the way they've sculpted the head itself to show off that signature smirk, that overconfidence from Dante is absolutely perfect. The colouring and the shading on the hair to show that sort of swept back grey white hairstyle that is pretty well known for Dante now. It's absolutely perfect as well. The head sculpt itself actually if you look closely you can see the stubble uh, that Dante has that sort of gruff disheveled look. You can also see it on his chest at the opening of his shirt. But overall like head sculpt wise this is one of the best I've seen in a very long time. And I do love my Prime 1 statues, but this one stands above them all so far. Now the body, the way the shading and colour, the gloss sort of colour they used on the jacket was absolutely beautiful. Alongside the sculpting of the leather, the way it flows at the back to show that sort of action pose that he's standing in. Just unrivaled. Obviously you see that in Nero and Virgil as well, but it really comes through here with the dark red in the leather. Um, you can also see the stitching throughout all the obviously all the embroidered stitching across the back and the arms of the jacket as well as the buckles underneath the arms and even the small skull that you can see at the back. The undershirt that Dante is wearing as well has been perfectly sculpted and shaded as well as the colouring to flow in the same manner as the jacket itself. If you look closely you can actually see on the arms the torn parts of the sleeve itself wrapping around his arm and that's really well painted not any bleed through at all that I can see now one of the parts that absolutely blew me away about this statue was the fact that if you look very closely on some of the arms if not all you can very cleanly and clearly see the veins coming out of his arm the perfect light blue tinge just to add that extra lifelike quality to him 
I've never seen that in a statue better than this. It's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Honestly, it was just a big surprise to me and really well done. Now on to the trousers and boots. Uh, they were both, both of these parts were sculpted in a similar fashion to the jacket using the same stitching method as well, where you can see each individual part of the stitch and um, to show off that really nice textured look. The trousers themselves use another uh, textured look in the sculpt to make it look sort of like realistic leather, which is really, really nice to see and absolutely fantastic look for him overall. The boots, you can see all the straps, the buckles, and yet again, the stitching. And then just as an added little feature on the bottom of the feet, you can also see sort of mud splatter and dirt, which is just a fantastic little detail to add. Overall, a fantastic looking body, and honestly, I couldn't be happier with that. Who wants to see some weapons and switch outs? I know I do, so let's just get into those. Let's have a look at the swappable parts that come with both the standard and the DX versions of this statue. We'll start off with firearms. First off, we have the amazing ebony and ivory handguns, Dante's signature handguns throughout the series. Both were sculpted perfectly, and even tiny details such as the ebony and ivory signatures are actually printed across both guns. Uh, they have also got the, the small, very, very small writing for that states for Tony Redgrave by 45 Caliber Studio uh, Artworks. Sorry. <laughs> and on the grip, it features the inlay portrait of Victorian women, which you could see in the game as well. Ebony, obviously, featuring a dark haired uh, Victorian woman, and Ivory, featuring a fair haired Victorian woman. Just really nice little details. It really adds to, obviously, the small part of the statue, but just really adds, really gives it some extra presence in the statue itself. The Coyote A, the double barrel shotgun, um, doesn't really feature the same sort of high quality detail as the Ebony and Ivory. I don't know if that's down to Prime 1 maybe feeling that people wouldn't display this part or what, but the colours felt really flat on the metal portion. No attention, no real detail in there and the same goes for the wooden portion of the double barrel shotgun as well where the wood effect seems almost lazy and you can still see the brush strokes. I don't know if they thought that was maybe meant to resemble the wood sort of texture, but it really didn't shine through on this piece. So the, the, the Coyote A was a little bit disappointing and seems a little bit lifeless. Now onto a highly detailed weapon, the Kalina Ann. Now that was really, really well designed uh, in the statue and has a huge presence overall throughout it and even requires its own separate arm to attach to the statue, unlike the other weapon switch outs. The size is almost the same length as the swords uh, that come with the statue and honestly just looks absolutely great. There are two parts of it that need to be attached before attaching it, one of which isn't even visible when you're looking directly at the statue, but the harpoon portion, I'm almost certain was made of metal, and just props right in the top of it there. Um, like, it is quite weighty, this part as well, and obviously that <laughs> really reflects how big that part is. You can really see the, the dings and the cuts, and the, obviously the battle damage that the weapon's gone through, and it's just really, really cool to see that. I absolutely love the detail of that weapon. Although my favourite weapons are still to come and those are always going to come over any bazooka or rocket launcher. My favourite part the swords. Starting with the rebellion we actually get two copies of this weapon to go with the statue. Why you ask? One of them is to go in the back of Dante's jacket which clips in with a magnetic pull and then one is a weapon switch out for his right hand. This weapon is very much like Ebony and Ivory. It is a signature weapon seen throughout the series, but had slight redesigns done for Devil May Cry 5. Dante received this sword as a keepsake from his father, much like Virgil received the Yamato. This part was really heavy, and when I removed both of the rebellions from the packaging, you could really feel the weight to it, and I'm almost certain it wasn't made of resin or polystone like the rest of the statue, and I actually believe, due to the cold touch, it's actually made of metal, and it's just a really nice touch to such an iconic weapon. Um, I spent a lot of time looking over it, and it does seem to be the best weapon made for this statue, and honestly, I couldn't be happier with that. The hilt, however, doesn't feature the same 
sort of material as the the blade itself and seems to be more light lightweight um but it is still highly detailed just like the rest of the sword now the sword itself features of a very damascus steel sort of look across the blade and if you look closely both sides are actually different the differences are on the on one side the demon side you see the handguard has a skull with demon horns at protruding out of the eyes and the the mouth of the skull is actually open in a sort of screaming motion if you move further down the blade you can see that the the Damascus steel weave, the, the woven feature of it, is much more noticeable and is a lot deeper and a lot more intricate on the demon side. Whereas you flip it over and you can see on the blade itself that those Damascus steel lines, while still there, are not as noticeable and instead you also have dents, nicks and cuts down the blade for just battle-worn damage. And if you look at the skull in the similar position to the other side, on the human on this human side that the skull has no horns in the eyes and the mouth is closed and it is very clearly a human skull really cool feature obviously perfect representation from the video game <laughs> just a beautiful sword now the hilt as i said is made from a different material but is and is far lighter than the rest of the blade but it's really really detailed with a woven pattern in the hilt itself and the pommel is split into seven spikes which obviously represents the the awakened state of the blade whereas the unawakened had a single spike honestly the attention to detail on this this sword alone is just astounding and i couldn't be happier with that and i absolutely love this sword and i'll likely display that sword as his main piece when i display the statue the sparda devil arm from the, the devil may cry 5 video game and is by this is by far the largest out of the switch outs that you that are provided for this statue it really has some amazing detail. Um, obviously, this is the, weak, the Awakened version uh, of the Force Edge seen in previous games. The Sparta itself features thick, organic-looking portions to it, around the, uh, which attach to the curved blade of the main base of the sword, and seems to have sort of a, a spinal column protruding out of the back of the blade. Um, the way that they've uh, done the colouring and the... the texture and the shading really makes the organic portions of this sword look really horrific but in a really good way um it's just really really cool to see if you look at the pommel it is in fact the skull as well with the red jewel visible and then the green jewels placed below that through the organic portion honestly <laughs> it looks very realistic and pretty gross but in a very very good way uh, I love this sword. It's not my favourite in the set. But it has definitely got a massive pre presence to this statue. And any fans of the, the Sparta sword will absolutely love this. And I'd be surprised if they didn't. But for now, let's move on to my personal favourite sword from the game. And on this statue, just simply based on the details. Devil Sword Dante. While a lot more simplistic than the Sparta, it's my personal favourite out of the set. Um, the entire length of the blade is sort of uses a interwoven la like hardened lava like texture that just runs down the length of the blade even transfers into the the hand guard the the hilt and the pommel the hand guard itself seems to feature some sort of like scaled talons uh, which come over as uh, Dante's hands the interwoven lava-like design goes throughout the hilt and then into the pommel, which in which rests a red jewel. I was a little disappointed in the red jewel, personally. I thought they would have used clear resin for that. But it still looks great with the metallic paint that they've used on it. I absolutely love this sword. And it's going to be a real tough decision to choose between Rebellion and Devil Sword Dante. Another switch out is that of the additional arm, uh, which doesn't have a weapon. Uh, simply Dante's left arm in a taunting pose clearly aimed at an, an enemy or opponent just backing them forward trying to get them to come towards him to well do the damage that you'll see that you've done to the damage on the base now just a reminder the switch outs for the devil sword Dante the Sparta and the cleaner Anne are only available in the DX version of this statue so bear that in mind if you ever decide to buy 
this particular statue. You may just get the originals if you buy the standard. Now onto the base. This base was incredibly heavy and I honestly struggled to even get out of the box. Sadly, my base had one minor flaw, which was a broken hair on the front of the Impusa enemy. But thankfully Prime 1 resolved this issue very quickly and it was great of them to help. And it was much appreciated with such an expensive piece. The base is built up mostly of the remains of this slain Impusa which Dante is standing on. Uh, the gore and the damage uh, that, you that you can see from multiple bullet wounds, uh, sword wounds across the Impusa's head and back are just amazing and just so, so well sculpted. The largest and most standout detail on this statue is that of the head slash itself across the Impusa's head. Uh, the, the blood flowing from it splattered across both sides of between the split. The, the gory detail that you can see with the brain and the the viscera and the, the still attached parts interlocked between the two is it's disgusting but beautiful in its own way and a little horrific at the same time. I would not want this statue on a bedside table. That would be pretty terrifying to wake up to. The triple faces of the Impusa itself are another amazingly designed and sculpted part of the statue. If you look really closely, it looks like, from a distance, to be one face. But when you look closely, you can actually see the nose and eyes of two other heads on either side of the main face. <laughs> it's a very fine detail that you don't you don't really notice in the main game itself but it looks absolutely horrifying here but it's just absolutely beautiful and i, I couldn't be happier with that now the, the middle head itself is the one that is split and if you look closely you can see the clenched teeth and the blood pouring out of the mouth um of all the and all the fleshy like sort of talons and spikes that come out of it it's just Honestly, one of the most gory uh, bases I've seen from Prime 1 yet. And that's including the Geralt statue that where he was standing on a beheaded short. This, I would say, far outreaches that one. Now, onto the rest of the Impusa itself. Uh, as you can see, on its back, there is an attached wing, uh, which uses the black and blue sort of glossy paint to really show off that otherworldly world sort of feathers. Just really cool and if you look closely you can also see a bullet wound from the battle uh, you can also see bullet wounds across the entire base itself from the Impusa's head its back its wing to the concrete around it just bullet holes everywhere but where's the other wing you wonder uh, that it seems to be that was uh, completely torn off in the battle as you can see a uh, torn piece on the back of the Impusa that just looks like the wing has been clean ripped off. Uh, definitely a nice added detail in comparison to Nero where the other wing was just simply not visible. Whether or not that just means that the thing had one wing in total or not, but this one definitely had two at one point. And Dante is clearly sought to it that it just has the one left. You can also see on either side that the Impusa's claws have been crushed by debris one reaching out for Dante's leg and the other one just crushed underneath it. That leads us into the other parts of the statue with the the broken and shattered debris of buildings that line up the, the sides and under the uh, underside of Dante himself. Just the, the way they've used the shading, the painting, the, the different colours to really show the how the, the buildings have degraded and been destroyed. It's absolutely beautiful, almost looks realistic when looking at it even up close. The cracks, the just all the damage just looks absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it. Uh, one of the standout features of this statue though is the, of the, the Clyphod roots, which seem to be, they wrap around the entire statue, almost strangling every part of the base, which is really cool if, you, if you've played the game, you know that those Clyphod roots are absolutely everywhere, just strangling the Red Grave City. Uh, I definitely love that feature on this statue. Really shows the, the sheer damage that this demon invasion has caused. And the base itself is just absolutely perfect. I do love my do love a messy base. 
and that's definitely what this is. Now there was some other little added details to the base itself with the sort of metal protruding out of the concrete here and at the back. Now I had, I had some problems with these metal parts, I'm unsure why they were necessary for this statue as they've clearly sculpted in those parts as well. And they were just a little bit fiddly, definitely not made of the same materials as the rest of the statue. They were quite difficult to piece in and it took me quite some time to figure out which ones go where because the colour that they use in the instructions, they have colours on the tips that are meant to show you where to key them in. The colour on the actual pieces themselves had rubbed off. So it was damn near impossible to figure out where they were meant to go. But eventually we did succeed and we managed to get it to go in. Now the pieces at the back, they were fairly easy to put in and just add that little extra realistic look to the back of Dante as well. So those parts were appreciated at the very least. Lastly, with the DX version, you actually get a little bonus item with the red orb. Much like with Nero with his green orb and Virgil with his blue orb, you get this little added bonus for, I'm, I'm assuming, around $50. Uh, it's a beautiful little companion piece and definitely adds to the overall look when in display. Although this one's a little bit spiky and is actually very sharp in comparison to the rounded uh, green orb and the angular blue orb. But definitely a nice little clear resin addition to this collection. So what's the size of the statue you ask? The height itself comes in at around about... 80.2 centimeters or 32 inches tall at its tallest with the devil sword dante which is the tallest standing sword uh it all, that is also a similar measurement if he's holding a sparda at its shortest it stands at 63.3 centimeters 25 inches with the ebony and ivory weapons the width is approximately 52.2 centimeters at its widest with the rebellion on his back and the depth is yet again at its widest with 52.2 with the Kalina Anne and the Coyote attached at the same time. Also the weight, because I know a lot of you collectors, including myself, like to, like to keep these pieces on shelving in cabinets that sometimes cannot handle the weight of these statues. The weight of this individual statue... <laughs> so if you are putting it on a shelf higher up above other statues or elsewhere... Please be careful to make sure that your shelf capacity can handle this statue because it is very heavy. Okay, so now the reason we're all here. Is this statue worth the price of 1,149 US dollars? F*** yes it is. The statue is an amazing piece and the detail of the statue is above and beyond anything I've seen from Prime 1 before. Like many statues I've had in the past at a similar price point have not reflected this amount of detail yes there was damage to the statue but that as i said before was qu quickly resolved and it i honestly could not say I, I cannot express how much i love this statue this is a must-have for any devil may cry fan and you will never receive better quality from another studio for this statue I personally cannot wait to see what Prime 1 has in store for us in the future for the Devil May Cry line. I'm aware that they have the V statue um, in the works, but I don't believe I'll be buying that one myself. As he was, while a main character, is a minor character for the main series. So I don't see myself personally buying that one as the, the three, Nero, Virgil and Dante, look absolutely perfect together by themselves. But for now, that will be me done with the Devil May Cry series reviews for Prime 1 Studios. Maybe. We'll see. Um, hopefully you picked up on the little hint um, throughout the video uh, for the next review. Um, right after this video, I'll be releasing a short video featuring all three of these incredibly detailed statues. But until then, if you like this content, please hit subscribe if you like this video. Uh, please hit the like button and check out my other reviews. If you have any questions or even just have something to say, please leave a comment. See you guys next time.